this by um, getting the youth to have some work experience okay. um, through our sponsors that give us the opportunity to be able to reach out to young people, disadvantaged people, um, and put them through um, career readiness. To gain practical experience. Yes, Thank this you. would be your practical experience, including your theory, uh, because we do have um, CETA accredited um, institutions that will then um, give these young people some theory experience. Do, do you work just as an independent organization out there, or is there a link between your organizations, your economy slash unlocked, I like the name, Yes. with, with government that assists you to penetrate the, 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 the work industry? Yes, so we are um, rolling out um, 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 a project that is initiated by the president. Mm. Um, as you understand that there's a lot of unemployment mm. and most of the time young people will um, battle to get into work because they do not have experience. Mm. This is also assisting with poverty um, within our country. If you are able to develop young people and give them the opportunities and get them out of their homes and get them out of, their street, out of the streets, um, that will then assist with um, mm. um, young people uh, being lost and, mm. and, and, and not having hope for the future. Okay. So, so you, you gave us that uh, link with the office of the president. Yes. What about the nervous system that we are running from here, the okay. community constituency uh, COVID front 19? Uh, yes. So we've had a wonderful opportunity to be working under the campaign for cancer. Mm. We are here in support of the campaign for cancer. And we're here as we've got a lot of young people that um, are under um, our company. Um, so we are here to assist in terms of getting information, it's data of what is going on out there, what people have been experiencing during this period. There's various things that are affecting people mm. and these things can start from um, hunger mm. um, and it can be people with chronic diseases sitting at home. It's, it can be the elderly people. Mm. We've also been seeing a lot that people have been facing a lot of um, uh, violence that can be coming in different forms, mm. whether it's uh, within a household, whether it's um, within the police, people being on the streets, people being beaten up. So there's various things, people working and um, uh, people not working. Um, there's various things that are affecting communities and people during this period. So we're collecting the data. And, feed to them. and feeding into to the, um, center, the yeah. nerve center. Okay. So this information is very, very crucial. It's done through surveys, but it is going out there and getting understanding as to how the people are feeling. How is this affecting um, the communities out there? The, the, this data, yes. you, you, do you use these learners that you are working so, with to collect it on behalf of the nerve center? Or uh, this is a totally different program altogether? That so as we are involved in young people we've had projects that um, are within um, hospitals and similar situations mm. um, in the past so yes um, we are giving our young people hope to be busy to be proactive mm. during this period okay. and also um, this will assist the young people not to be sitting at home and it will also assist them to have some kind of income and food oh, okay. so there is, there's a lot of people that are needed to be out there to to collect information to 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 be there um helping old people find their medication various things that are going on so it is um our network of about um we've got about three thousand youth mm. um under our care okay those are the ones that you have to please so these are platforms. so three thousand yes we've yeah. got about three thousand young people um so i handle a division which is called um staffing and absorption mm. so staffing and absorption basically means that you go out you find these amazing um companies with um people that are willing to develop their young people and mm. give them work experience in various departments within their companies mm. Interesting because uh, we, we talk about unemployment and, and it's, a, it's a major, major problem, even before COVID. Yes. I, mean, I don't know. South Africa was talking close on to 30% unemployment or the numbers just keep on changing all the time. Yes. The, these companies, what, what's in, in for them? To, for them to be proactive and uh, open their arms and do they come forward or do you have to go and find them? Or is there a database of saying 
we welcome young people to give them training. How, how does it work? And, and the incentive that these companies get so, for, from doing that? Yes, so we actually, we go and um, we are a platform that works um, around the clock in terms of the opportunities of getting funding, mm. the opportunities of finding these young people, um, companies to give them this uh, particular experience. Mm. So I would myself approach various companies companies mm. and have a full discussion with them around developing young people and then they buy into the concept. Some of our sponsors, we've got major big sponsors, mm. um, well-known brands, and these brands sometimes will sponsor as well as give experience. So I will go and approach a company, have a discussion with them around the type of young people that we have. Um, uh, interestingly enough, um, we actually find that um, companies are willing what? to to give people experience especially because now we have covered we've we've got the platform where we've covered um the the young people getting to uh, work the young people having food in their tummies um when they're at work and when they're at home so we give them enough for them to get to work to, that's the stipend so when i come to a company and i ask them i've got 10 young people um, and i'd like to develop them within the it space and i have a conversation with the director of a company mm. he is getting these these young people People at no cost all right so he can then decide okay in the midst of um, the year mm. can he then take them on on a permanent basis because obviously you must give a young person encouragement so they're coming in there they're working on a stipend it, it covers the basic um, um, necessities mm. so he can then commit to say or she can then commit to say that after the 12 months period this young person understands my company they've been with me I've trained them mm. at no cost so instead of now going out and finding somebody else they then take on this young ah. person so that's then the benefit for them because you get an opportunity to introduce From somebody. This pool. Yes, to introduce somebody to your business, yeah. train them in your business, yeah. let them understand what your business does, and then after the twelve month period, you are then going to take them on a permanent basis. You're listening to COVID nineteen Front Radio. Um, I'm with uh, Pumi Gumbi, who is the HOD uh, for you economy. Yes, she economy. Unlocked. Yes, and then she handles staffing and, and absorption. Is there a way of determining, out of all of these learners that you're putting out there in the yes. workplace, at you know the success rate or how many or what percentage doesn't have to be exact numbers get absorbed finally? And because the the ultimate goal is uh, to get full time job, I, I I should think so. Yes. Um, yes, so we are, uh, I mean, as um, I've come into the division, um, we're working on um, set processes mm. that will then monitor the success of a young person. Mm. From the time a young person walks into our offices, they are developed and they are given, you know, skills on how to, 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 to be interviewed, skills on how to present themselves. A simple thing as body language mm. when you're sitting with someone during an interview you from there we then like this one like this one yes <laughs> and then from there mm -hmm. we um will then um assist them on a culture fit within mm. a work environment mm. and then from there they develop within whatever it is that they're doing within that company mm. when that process is finished they i mean our hosts give in reports to say this is how that learner is doing so that we've got mm. our hands into the progress of the young person mm. then after that process is done um that particular host can absorb that person or we go out and find them um a position so i would say that um we can can say we've got about a 15% success rate mm. in terms of the whole per process going well mm. up until um, the person has got full-time employment. Mm, that's good. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah. And then another thing that I, I think makes me also extremely happy, yes. we obviously do not only look at the city life. We're involved in rural. Uh, rural areas, the guys in the farms. If you give a young person in a farm an opportunity, mm. they get that stipend, which goes a long way. These stipends feed families. Mm. Um, and if that young person is working in a farm, they can learn how to grow their own vegetables within mm. the 12 months. When they finish, Finished, um, they can then um, be able to be a farmer themselves. Mm, mm. You know, so because these the also the they've got the skill. Absolutely. Teach a man how to fish. Absolutely. And fed him for the rest of the life. Absolutely. Then uh, you and, and I take it that and you do from what you're saying that you interact with these young people. Yes. 
and uh, I, I don't know what lessons have you learned there because we're hearing different numbers that there are so many graduates, especially black. Yes. Who are sitting at home with sitting degrees and all of Absolutely. that, the professions, but they can't work. They can't. What, what's your assessment of just the percentage of out of the 3,000 uh, <laughs> that, you know, have gone through tertiary? And they're sitting at home. And, and, and no work. So this is, it's very funny that you We have a pilot here who now, you know, is also thinking otherwise with uh, air mm. travel having gone down by 95% in the world. Yes, mm. no. young man too. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Mm. No. This Hands is in the crew, for those who can see. He's a handsome young man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Talk to us. <laughs> so a rough. Yeah. So this is something that's very close to my heart, um, especially since I've joined my organisation. Mm. Um, I have these discussions with my team quite a lot, mm. and it's very funny that you're mentioning it. Mm. Um, I think that a person who has gone and studied, made the effort and committed themselves to um, getting a degree, committed themselves to learning a skill. Mm. They deserve that opportunity. They are, um, I feel, they are one person that you can uh, calculate a success rate in the program mm. because already they've shown some level of high commitment mm. towards developing their own lives. Mm. I feel a person like that, there is a, a huge number. Um, I can just make you a typical ex example. There's a, a client that I've just met, um, a black company. They are um, an, a, an office of attorneys and they came up to me and they're like, we're willing to um, assist you in, in, in giving these young people experience, but we'd like to get... Um, you know, um, um, attorneys. We'd like to get people that have studied law uh, mm. and, 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 and train them within that field. So that also gives us an opportunity to go out there. We source these groups and these young people that studied law and they're sitting and they don't have anything to do and then we feed them into these companies so we are actually working in assisting companies that are looking mm. to give this experience and then go find um, graduates as well that match. are looking that match these these um, specifications and put them within um, 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 within these organizations and and, and develop is it, is them. Is a high number of them? Uh, uh, for me? It is huge. Of, of it is huge. It is huge. Metric. It is sad, and it is a huge number. The the, the amount of unemployment happening in this country is mm. quite big. But I believe with such projects mm. um, like what we do, we can be able to assist and give hope to young people. Where is the economy? And uh, you can look at it from the global uh, point of view of the world going. You, you know, why I'm asking this question, yeah. you know, people are saying that most of uh, these professions that we had 10, 15 years, even 40 years ago, are becoming redundant. Absolutely. Yeah. People are saying we are awash with teachers' qualifications, mm. nurses, and all of those and uh, some of these professions are not needed and it makes our learners our mm -hmm. young people to be irrelevant and not comply with what the industry is looking for yes where, where, in the industries and the economies that are there where do you think the young people if you have to advise them what kind of professions should be looking at to fit into the future so that they can be of value um, so we, we're going into a digital space, um, um, the whole entire world mm. globally. Um, and we also, I would also encourage young people to look into, um, you know, look into our land, look into agriculture, agriculture. yes, look into farming mm. um, and look into the IT space. Mm. Um, I, I'm a, a recruiter for, for, for many years um, and I would say that, you know, I've done recruitment within a bank and then we go through a recession and mm. the IT sector booms because new systems have to be developed. They're closing branches now. You They're can, closing branches. But they're banking. working, yes, mm. but we're working with technology. We, we're working mm. with, um, you know, everything is going digital. Mm. So if you can look into that space mm. um, as a young person, mm. but I would also not discourage young people to get into teaching, young people to get into nursing. Um, I would encourage that people follow mm. the things passion. that they've got a passion for, mm. you know, and, 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 and as you follow something that you've got a passion for, remember that looking for a job is a job itself, mm. right? Mm. So if you are unemployed, you are 
are looking, you are, you've got a job. Mm. And that job is to find a job and develop yourself. Nothing in this world is easy, any way that you go. So I'd say that focus, study, um, choose a career, and um, whatever you do, um, look at what is happening globally. Look at where the spaces are. We do have um, you know, a shortage in certain skills. Um, look into those shortages of where you know you will always be able to find some work. With COVID nineteen now, impact, yes, the lockdown, yes, and uh, we we are hearing all the time the mm. the, the negative impact is having on the economy yes. and people being laid off. It will definitely have impact in the learnership recruitment absolutely uh, directly yes. of all of those students that are at home. They don't know if they are going to write exams. Yes. And then you, you come into the industry where now gradually we are opening yes. the industry and we don't know what is left of it. Yes. There are strict rules there to comply with. Yes. There must be social distancing yes. uh, when at the workplace yes. and all of those things. Obviously, I mean, companies are not going to absorb more learners when yes. you must create spaces in between. Yes. How, how do you see that unfolding, going in? into the future and and what's been the response i don't know if you are operating under yes. lockdown or what's going on yes are they reluctant <coughs> and uh, how's the absorption rate and, and what do you think so so the, there's various sectors yes. various sectors there is essential services yeah. there are companies that are not so much essential services so i would say that there are sectors that need to be working for an example let's say our farmers because we need food yeah. these are sectors that can encourage uh, some kind of movement um, within this period. There are set rules. For an example, um, you know, we're looking at people having permits, uh, PPE, um, social distancing, creating an environment that is safe for your workers when they come in, sanitizing, um, thermometers, masks. So there's various things that um, need to be done in order for people to come back into a work environment. And then there is people that are, you know, operating from home. Please do operate from home as much as you can. And we need to encourage, um, you know, the entire situation of being able to do your Skype interviews, do your hangouts, mm. um, operate from the house. But it will of... make the employers, put me sorry to uh, chip in there, mm. uh, to be reluctant to absorb learners, especially when, you know, so the, the, uh, okay. uh, and then crowd the environmental, okay, uh, I mean, the, the work environment. So we've got the Department of Health. Mm. Um, we, we are, um, right now, we are in the opportunity of working with the campaign of cancer. Mm. There are sectors that are needed yes. where young people can fit in okay. and be able to be out there and work. But when it comes to, um, you know, your private companies and so forth, mm. um, yes, this is going to have a major impact. Mm -hmm. It's literally, there's no movement that is going on at this point, at mm. this moment. Okay. There, there's also been, just lastly, um, uh, debates about this stipend and uh, you know this uh, having to gain experience and skills and some political parties whether they want to gain some points or what have you saying that there must be minimum wage even for these learners minimum you know, wage yeah there's a right and others saying that you cannot be talking minimum wage when there's unemployment we're taking the youth out of the streets and yes. they must just be happy with the little that they get where, where do you stand? So, so with the stipends, it's actually not a salary. Say, so it's not a wage. A stipend is to give you money to be able to travel to work, give you money so that you're not starving at work, give you money so that you can buy that new pair of pants so that you look. Is kaftini in pashas okoga in malio kibela. So that is what the stipend is for. Obviously, it stretches because we know it feeds families. Mm. But I would not... If not abused. Yeah. Well, mm. I think it's just enough. Yeah. And I think that it's enough for somebody to say that I am learning and I'm growing and I've got, um, like I've got something to, to hold me through. Mm. 
Um, so I, I'd say that uh, our young people should rather be, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of Im implementations that have been put in place in various times in our in our in our life in our lives. This is one that we should uh, be grateful for. Kwame Gwimbi, we thank you for being with us. Thank and, you uh, for I take it that is, is not the last time we speak to you. Absolutely. And uh, I'm glad you're part of this never system. Thank and uh, from time to time, we'll be uh, talking to you with what you do, the cancer campaign, yes. and many other things if there are other developments on the leadership side. Yes. Yeah. All the best, and uh, we wish you luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. There was uh, uh, Pumi Gumbi, HOD, and for staffing and uh, absorption from U Economy at Slash Unlocked talking to us right here on COVID-19 Front Radio. And I'd like also to thank my colleagues. The station manager is uh, Denny Mwalusi, producer Kenny Mudise, uh, content creator is Fofole Refolo, and uh, technical engineer Steve Kosi Ramohama. And uh, I am Lawrence Tabani. Don't forget to remain vigilant and adopt good personal hygiene practices throughout this uh, lockdown and COVID-19 that has embraced the world. Thanks.